The chloride shift refers to the exchange in the bicarbonate ion for the chloride ion that takes place inside the red blood cells of our body. And the chloride shift takes place not only in the tissues but also in the lungs. But the process is reversed as we'll see in just a moment. So let's begin by focusing on the chloride shift as it takes place inside our tissues. So inside the cells of exercising tissues, these cells are continually undergoing different types of metabolic processes such as cellular respiration. And so the major waste byproduct that is produced in the process is carbon dioxide. Now, of course, carbon dioxide is a nonpolar molecule and so it will not readily diffuse in our blood plasma. Only about 5% of the carbon dioxide will exist in the blood plasma in its CO2 form. About 90% of the carbon dioxide, as we'll see in just a moment, actually exists in its bicarbonate ion form. Now, how exactly do we transform the carbon dioxide into its soluble bicarbonate ion form? So basically, inside the cells of our tissue, different types of processes produce a bunch of carbon dioxide molecules. And because these molecules are nonpolar, they can easily diffuse across the membrane of the cells of the tissue and enter the extracellular matrix. And then they diffuse across the capillary walls found nearby our tissue cells. Now, once inside the blood plasma, the CO2, about 5% of that CO2 remains inside the blood plasma, but the rest essentially enters or diffuses across the membrane of the red blood cells. Now, once inside the red blood cells, what happens is a catalytic enzyme known as carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the combination of gaseous CO2 and liquid water to basically form an acid known as carbonic acid. Now, carbonic acid, H2CO2, is a weak acid and that means it will dissociate into bicarbonate, the conjugate base to this acid, as well as a hydrogen ion. Now, this hydrogen ion ultimately leads to the Bohr effect. It binds onto a special allosteric site on our hemoglobin and that causes the hemoglobin to decrease its affinity for oxygen and that leads to more oxygen diffusing out of the red blood cell and into the cells of our tissue. Now, what happens to our bicarbonate ion? Well, the bicarbonate ion ultimately leaves the red blood cells found next to our tissues and the way that this takes place is we have a special ion exchange protein found within our membrane of the red blood cells and what happens is a single bicarbonate ion leaves the cell and enters the blood plasma because it can easily dissolve inside the blood plasma because unlike CO2 bicarbonate has a full negative charge it is polar but at the same time that our bicarbonate ion leaves the cell in order to maintain an electrically neutral state in order to not build any charge we need to transport another particle another atom that contains a negative charge into the cell because if one negative charge exits the cell we have to basically take a negatively charged atom and make it go into the cell to maintain an electrically neutral state because we do not actually want to affect the electrochemical gradient that exists between the inside of the red blood cell and the outside the blood plasma so we essentially exchange a single bicarbonate ion for a single chloride ion and this is what we call the chloride shift so the chloride shift takes place to maintain a balance of electrical charge between the inside of the red blood cell the cytoplasm portion and the outside environment the blood plasma 
So about 90% of the carbon dioxide exists in its bicarbonate ion state inside the blood plasma. About 5% exists dissolved inside our blood plasma as CO2 and the rest of it is actually bound to hemoglobin. So hemoglobin doesn't only bind oxygen, it can also bind a tiny bit of carbon dioxide. Now let's move on to our lungs. What exactly takes place inside our lungs? So basically inside the lungs we also have the chloride shift that exists but it takes place in the opposite direction and that's because the entire purpose of the tissue is to take the CO2 and bring it into the red blood cells but the entire purpose of the lungs is to take the CO2 from the red blood cell and bring it to the space of our alveoli which ultimately expel that CO2 during the process of exhalation. So let's see what takes place. So the bicarbonate ion enters the blood plasma and then it travels with the blood plasma all the way to the pulmonary capillaries. And once we find it in the pulmonary capillaries, what happens is the opposite process takes place now in order to maintain electrical neutrality when a single bicarbonate ion enters our red blood cell a single chloride ion must leave that red blood cell so that we have a net charge of zero that essentially travels across the red blood cell so one negative charge enters and one negative charge leaves now once our bicarbonate is inside our red blood cell only then can it basically interact with the H ion and form our carbonic acid and only then can our carbonic anhydrase uh, catalyze the formation of CO2 and water by breaking this carbonic acid down. So remember the carbonic anhydrase enzyme is only found within our red blood cell. It is not found inside the blood plasma and that's why this and uh, this anion must first cross the membrane and enter the red blood cell before we can actually form our carbon dioxide. Now once we form the carbon carbon dioxide because it is nonpolar it can easily diffuse across the membrane of the red blood cell then across our wall of the capillary and finally enter the alveolar space where we exhale and we basically expel that carbon dioxide to the outside environment. So we see that the chloride shift takes place inside the red blood cells and it takes place not only in the tissues but also in the lungs. But the process is reversed in these two cases. Here to maintain an electrically neutral passageway of ions so that we don't have any buildup of negative charge what happens is within the red blood cells of the tissues the car the bicarbonate exits but the Cl the chloride enters in this case the opposite is true because we want to take in bicarbonate to transform it into carbon dioxide inside the lungs basically a single chloride ion exits when a single bicarbonate enters our red blood cell and this is what we call the chloride shift.